Hi guys, uh, welcome to my tutorial video on my main menu and character selection. What we're going to run through today is the features, uh, a feature run through, which is going to include everything like the controls and just show you what everything does really. And then the second thing we're going to go over is customization, so how you can customize things because the images and that are all customizable through Unreal Engine. And then we're going to move on to databases showing you how you can swap out some of the players with a really simple database system which I've made and it just makes the process a lot easier for you guys so you can swap out your characters and fetch characters and fetch songs etc and then we are going to cover the game instance too which will allow us to transfer over our variables from system from sorry world to world so let's get into it so you can see here we have the this main menu screen and you can also hear some light music in the background by pressing the Z key we are able to change sort of shuffle through all our different kind of songs all this panel is fully customizable in the widget settings which I'll show you soon and you can change everything for the background color and controllers are also supported so if we go to soundtracks the only ones that are available just now are soundtracks and quick fight but I'll also show you how you can set up the um, like to trigger one of these to work. Right now I've just um, dummied over these for example. So the only one that works is soundtracks in quick fight. So in the soundtracks you're able to press the X key which will play whatever one you're hovering over. So play this one uh, which also equals the, X, the square key on the PS4 controller, which I haven't yet listed the keys, but it should be easy enough for you to put in your own keyboard keys. You can find the images in that online. So if you, you'll see the little checkbox. If you press enter on any one of the checkboxes, uh, you'll see it removes the check checkbox. And if we press X now, it'll, uh, sorry, the Z key, it'll shuffle through only the selected songs. So this feature is really good if you know you, some people, someone's playing a game and you don't like a particular song. Well, you can deselect whatever songs you don't like and it saves it for uh, the next time you play. So if you press the shift key, you'll be able to back out of here. And now we can move on to the quick fight. Now, in my opinion, this is my favorite screen that I've made, the character selection. It runs off a database system and you'll see the PS4 controllers in the middle. It is currently only optimized for two controllers, but I'm sure you could find a way to expand it yourself. You know, you can move the two controllers to the left and add in controller three or four. So if you move it to the left, it'll show, it'll change to the first person in the heavyweight division. And again, you can customize this to whatever you want. If you want to make it football teams, you know, the possibilities are endless, whatever you want to make it. You can sift through all your characters. It's got question marks for the characters that don't have images this again you can input your own images in the databases and select their nationality also put up the game name at the top and um also things like their stats so if you press left control or the right stick in it'll go it'll push in the player stats and you'll be able to shift through with the up and down arrow keys and show the stats too uh, if you press e and q you can sift through the controller settings now this you'd have to set up yourself i don't I haven't really set this up it's only just if through different titles what you can do though is if you go into what you can do is also the red controller which is player two would be able to slide into the other one uh, only one slots obviously for each controller and the red controller instead of the blue lighting up on my side that it would actually turn to red for the other controller Either controller can also navigate the division, so you know you can change it to the cruiser weight, the middle weight, welter weight, and so on and so forth. Now you'll notice the legend sign come up if you have like a legend player or if you have like a legend team, you'd be able to sift through and um, show that they're a legend by having the legend sign come down, and also the brick background will change. So when you have at least one person to a side it will come up with the advanced if you're wondering if you go to one side and it doesn't come up you actually need to go to the other side and select a fighter this is to ensure that another fighter is definitely getting selected and 
then you can press enter. Also before that, you'll quickly see the belts come up and disappear. Again, this is done by the, the check boxes in the database. You can just check if you wanted somebody to show all the belts, like if you go to the heavyweights. You can see he's got all the belts and he's got one belt. Now, this last screen that I've included is the, you know, like the game settings. So again, the fighter tactics doesn't really do anything, but um, you know, you could program it to do whatever you like. Also, you got your stadium, which this one's called the LA Stadium. And this one's called the London Stadium. Now for copyright issues, I can't actually use the real name of the stadium. But you can like set it through play during the day, no, or you could if it's got a day, you know, like it's got an open roof, so you can select the plate during the day. And I've also included another image for that. Again, this is also database, so you'd be able to set that settings of the database. Also, you can set what kind of event it is. Now I've made this event thing change the fill capacity. You know, if it's a middle card or a lower card, as fans are coming to the stadium, you don't really want the fill capacity to be that high. But it actually shows you as well the capacity of the stadium too. So another thing I've included is you can shift through the rounds and also the minutes. Now game speed allows you to speed up the gameplay. So if you're having 12 minute rounds at three minutes, you're not exactly going to want to play for the full half an hour. So you might times up the game speed, you know, to make it five minutes instead. Um, it might like the, the game clock will go for 30 minutes, but it'll only be five minutes really. And also media coverage. Now, if you watch my uh, boxing game that I've made on my main channel, you'll see images in here. But for copyright issues, I can't actually put the official images in here. But if you wanted to change the media coverage, you could put your own images in there. So, the next thing we're going to go over is customization. So, if I go to widgets, you'll notice where is it? Uh, first menu. Now, you'll see here in the quick fight, I can change all different things like the hovered color so we can set it to maybe a purple if we wanted see it's purple uh, you can really change the color to whatever you want and these images too you can also swap these images out so right now i've got the image two girl boxing i might want to swap it out for i don't know an irish flag you know the possibilities are endless but you can actually you might have to go down to the transform and really play with the transform that's the only um, I wouldn't say downfall, but it's uh, it is a little bit of a drawback, but it's just the best thing I could have made because I didn't want you have to Photoshop every single tile, so it was the best best compromise. But it's really easy to manipulate and you know move them over and scale. So that's how you customize these. They're all pretty much the same. And for swapping out the things, you can see here, insert widget here, like above. So like these ones above, you want to insert them exactly the same way. So you just copy copy this line and then select from the drop down, which, you know, whether it's a widget or if it's a level you want to load, whatever you want to do, this is where it, whichever one trigger out bro go to gym tile so you can rename all the tiles to whatever you want and just insert them here this is just a little bit to unpress some of the buttons to uns to, sorry to play out the animation now going back to the customization bit what you have to be aware of for the controllers to work with it i actually have done it in a way that each tile's number, so this might be tile 1, 2, uh, sorry, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or something along those lines, and each tile's got a number, so uh, you can actually that's tile number 3, tile number 4, tile number 2, so when the con when it, the controller is on this one, if you move it in a certain direction, it'll change to this one, so it's just something to keep in mind if you're reprogramming them, uh, you can actually see the kind of it's a little bit complicated, but all it's saying is if it's on if it's on number four, it'll set as number three. If you're pushing with the like up with the W key and vice versa, so it works for all these. I did actually later on discover 
macros, which is a lot easier system. I made this years ago, and it you know it does the job. So I don't really have any plans to change it. But I could have macroed this and made it just a little bit smaller. But it's just a time, just wasting time. So that's all for the customization. Oh, there is actually one more thing quickly. For the background, you can actually manipulate the background however you like. You know, some of them I've had to stretch them out and make them. I think there's only three background tiles, I think. If we go to here, we've got tiles. Oh, there's two. There's a big one and a small one. And these are all just... So if you want to Photoshop them, instead of having to shop Photoshop one for every size, it's just literally two different designs are done. And you just need to extract these. Right click. Asset export and put them into Photoshop and then you can just I made it mixed between uh, two colors so I put a line down the middle and then just gradient between like a light lightish red and then a darkish red and then done the exact same for the black and that's how I got achieved this effect on Photoshop and then you can just re-import them and reuse them but once you replace uh, this one so if you right click re-import with new file it will replace them all with the current one and I don't really want to go into Photoshop and, and show you is it's kind of, you know, you kind of need to have a f basic Photoshop skills for it. Or you could just leave it the way it is. Next thing I'm going to show you is the databases. Now, the databases, if you go from here, main files. Uh, where are they? So for the fighters, you're going to go into fighter databases. Then you've got data tables. And then we're going to open up here. Now it looks a bit complicated at first, but each line's another fighter. The character ID doesn't really matter. All that matters is the, these numbers and these numbers. And you can kind of play about and add in whatever else you want. You know, character ID isn't really important. The rows are important, the row names. So if you do add another one, all you need to do is just add like uh, 35 point something as it looks based on an integer basis. So in this, you'll see I've got the player's name, the fighter mesh. Now this isn't shown in the main menu screen, but it might be useful if you want to assign a fighter mesh to the selected character. So when they select, they might select this Anthony James character. Then the, if you load it in via the game instance, it will then look for the fighter mesh if you select it to look for the fighter mesh and it'll get the appropriate fighter mesh and apply it to that character. Also you got things like a walkout song if you ever had a walkout. Um, and again this is just all the stats. You'll also find that this is where you select where if you what belt you want them to have on. So you know I had all these ones ticked for this one. And uh, different type of idol I had before. And then this is this one is a legend so if you take this one and if it, the main menu screen goes over that character, the drop down will automatically get triggered. So that's about it for the databases. There is one more database which I'll show you. Actually, sorry, two more databases. There is the audio database. Music data table. Music playlist. So in here you've got the song name, artist name, song file and music cover. Again, you can add as much as you want in here as long as you make the row name the same number just so, again, it's all of an integer basis. The same also applies for the stadium, if I can find it. Here we go, stadium databases. So again, same here. This one has got the London Stadium as the name and then the stadium image for night and uh, has day stadium this box is ticked because it does stadium capacity you can set to whatever you like uh, level name to load uh, right now it's just NA because I don't actually have a level for it to load and then this is the stadium during the day London sta uh, the image during the day and the day level name to load so again this would be the stadium during the day to load and then this one just plays the exact same but it doesn't have anything for the other level because this box is not ticked this one's just the exact same but it doesn't have anything because 
it doesn't have a day stadium, so it's not ticked. Now, the game instance is here. You can rename this one if you don't already have a game instance and put it as your main game instance if you go to project settings and we put in game instance there you go game instance class here we go bcg instance replace now what this will do is if you have this in it will allow us to save if you select your character it will allow us to sit temporarily save all of our variables so you know who what controllers at what side for the pawn one and pawn two um and also what number in the database data, data table we are using and also other important variables from the main menu screen like coverage type game rounds game speed stadium to load and Basically, that'll transfer that when we save these variables, we'll be able to load it in into our current world, so like our level world, allowing us to load the characters. Otherwise, you don't really have a way you can transfer what characters you're wanting over, unless you use like a save file. But I just feel it's pointless, you know, trying to save it and load it all the time. You may as well just temporarily use this. Uh, I guess you could opt to use a save file, but that's not covered in this. So if you did, it'd be in your own own risk and I wouldn't uh, really be offering much support for that. So with this, like I said, if you've already got a game instance you're already using and you're familiar with game instances, all you need to do is copy these variables over and then go into the individual widgets uh, that save things like the match details. And where is it? backwards and forwards see how this this saves in the game instance so you will have to make sure that you replace these these cast nodes with your current game instance which again is easy enough to do otherwise you won't be able to save your variables over so if you don't have your own game instance all you need to do like I just showed you is go to edit project settings and game instance There you go, and pop your own game instance in there. So, again, this says replace. I've listed it as replace because you should replace it as you've already got a, a game instance in, but if not, just use this one and you can, you know, just change the name of it. So, that's been it for this tutorial. If there is any comments or any questions you have about it, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. If there is anything else that you're wanting a tutorial on, I'd be more than happy to do it if it gets a few more people needing the same thing. The same way, explain it over an email. Uh, again, any more questions, feel free to email me as well and I'll try out the best I can. Thanks for the continued support and please purchase this on the marketplace.